Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. In this video, we're gonna be tearing down our bottom end on our FC450 and inspecting all these parts. The process will be similar for any of the late model KTM or Husqvarna 450s, 500s, or 501s. Just make sure you reference your model specific service manual for more information and specs. To do this job, you're gonna need some safety glasses, rubber gloves, and some rags. Now, tools you can't do the job without are your flywheel puller. We have a primary drive gear puller, crankcase splitter, and your flywheel holding tool. Now, if you need any of these special tools, be sure to get those on our website. I also recommend using a gear jammer. Now, the rest of this stuff is really gonna be common hand tools and some contact cleaner along with some grease. Now, one thing in these common hand tools I wanna to point out are the snap ring pliers. The whole reason we tore our engine down is to install the KTM six gear kit. You've got things like a shift drum, a bearing, different washers, and this will be different from bike to bike. Now, don't forget your circ clips if this is all you're doing for the piston, but if you're in here for other reasons, you might need a piston kit. Uh, we have bottom end gaskets. You might need some silicone sealant or some head gaskets. We're also using a Tusk oil change kit and some coolant. Now, if you had any issues with your crankshaft, you can either buy a rebuild kit or replace the complete assembly. With our engine on the stand and our top end removed, we are picking up where we left off in the last video. So if you need help getting to this point, go back and watch the previous videos. To disassemble the bottom end, we need to remove the nut from the flywheel. So we're using our Tusk flywheel holding tool. Now to pull the flywheel, we have our flywheel puller, 28 by 1.0 thread pitch. I'm gonna apply grease to the threads. Then we're gonna install this little collar. And thread the tool onto the flywheel. Next, we're gonna tighten the tool down and break our flywheel free. Next, we're gonna remove the cam chain guides and our cam chain. You wanna inspect the chain guides for any visible damage to them or any grooves that are worn into them. These ones are looking pretty good and you wanna inspect the cam chain and you wanna look at all the individual links and make sure none are cracked or broken. And one of the main things to check is if you rotate the chain like this, you don't want anything to bind up. If it does, then you're gonna to wanna to replace it. At this point, we're gonna remove the suction pump cover. Now, we're just gonna visually inspect everything as we take it apart. And if you notice anything weird, you're gonna to wanna to refer to your service manual and take some measurements. Now real quick, I'm gonna inspect this O-ring. There's no tears in it, it looks good. Backside of the cover is not all galled up or worn out. And then we're just gonna check these rotors for any visible damage or signs of galling or pitting. They're looking pretty good. Make sure you don't lose that pin right here. That's not worn out either. Now we can remove the gear position sensor. And at this point, we're actually gonna remove the oil screen and the oil filter as well. Now while we're over here, we're gonna remove the collar for the transmission output shaft. Now there's also an O-ring in there, but we're just gonna get that out when we pull the transmission. After that, we're gonna remove the starter motor.
Now one thing to keep in mind, we have a woodruff key right here. Ours is stuck in there pretty good, so I'm just gonna leave it, but if it feels loose, then definitely take it out and put it aside. After that, we can remove our water pump cover and our right side engine cover. Now we can go ahead and remove our gasket. Now again, as we take everything apart, we're just gonna take a quick visual inspection. And if you see anything damaged, you wanna take measurements or get the part replaced. So this gear, the teeth are looking good. The bearings feel fine, they rotate freely. And you're also gonna to wanna to look at this bushing, where this rides on the bushing. That's nice and smooth. The bushing looks okay. This seal in here, you want to check it for any tears or damage. And then you're going to want to blow this jet out with some compressed air. Now one more thing to inspect. We already checked the up and down plate in the connecting rod in the top end video. So we're not going to cover that right here. But the main bearings for the crankshaft, you can lift up and down on each side of the crank. And if you feel any play, then those bearings are bad. And from there, again, just visual inspections. Now we're gonna remove this clutch. Now we're gonna remove the clutch and loosen these bolts up in a crisscross pattern. If you need help holding the clutch basket still, you can use the Motion Pro Gear Jammer. Now we can remove our spring and spring retainer. After that, we have this pretension ring we need to remove. And then we're gonna remove all of the clutch plates. Now on the cap, you wanna make sure this surface is in good condition, as well as all of these steel and friction plates. Now on the steel plates, if there's any signs of bluing, you wanna get all the plates replaced. This one doesn't look too bad. And then if you have any questions, if these friction discs look okay or not, you can actually use some digital calipers and measure their thickness. Now we can remove the rest of the clutch pack. We're gonna remove all the dowels. Make sure that there's no grooves on these. They look good. And we should be able to pull most of these plates out all at once. Go ahead and do that. Make sure you keep the correct orientation when you go to reassemble everything. And then last, we have this throw out bearing and you wanna make sure that rotates freely. This one looks good. Now we need to remove this clutch hub. To do that, we're gonna bend the tabs up on this lock washer behind that nut. But to keep everything in place, I'm gonna install the counter shaft sprocket just temporarily. We're gonna shift the bike into high gear. So we're just gonna put our vice grips on our counter shaft sprocket and that's gonna keep that shaft from rotating. All right, now we're taking our 27 millimeter socket. We're gonna break that free. I can remove the nut and that locking washer and then the hub. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those vice grips, the sprocket and the shift lever. And what we need to do next is we have our primary gear puller. So we can screw that on, tighten down the center bolt and pull the gear off. And one thing before I get this all the way off, this is just a one-way gear back here. So you wanna make sure it rotates freely counterclockwise, and then if you try to rotate it clockwise, make sure it locks up. 
Now from here we can go ahead and remove the woodruff key. And now we can slide the gear off. Next we're going to remove the shift shaft. So I'm going to press down on the shifting mechanism and we should be able to pull this right out. Now you can see there's a washer down there that doesn't want to come with the shaft. So if it doesn't come out, make sure you go back and get that. Next, we're going to remove the star wheel. So we have that Allen bolt right in the middle. We need to loosen that up. Now this locating arm, we don't have to remove it. You can if you want. Mainly you just want to inspect this wheel, make sure there's no play or damage to that. Same thing with the spring, just make sure it's not damaged. And if that's the case, you can leave those in place. Next thing we're going to do is remove this circlip off our transmission shaft. All right, next we're going to remove this other screen bolt on the bottom of the motor. Then we can start removing all of these bolts in this case half so we can split it. Now just keep in mind that you want to loosen all these bolts in a crisscross pattern. To make sure we keep all of these bolts in order, I just drew this case half out on cardboard and I'm going to put the bolts in the same place they would go on the case half. That's just going to help me stay organized. All right, now we're going to use our crankcase splitter and I'm going to set this piece that we had from our flywheel puller over the end of the crankshaft again just to protect it. And then we can set up the tool. This shouldn't take a ton of force. So we're just gonna spread this tool out in a Y pattern and install these studs by hand. All right, once the tool is in place, we're gonna turn it clockwise until the case starts to split apart. If it takes a lot of force, if you're putting a ton of pressure on this, stop and find out what's holding it up. Our case looks like it's splitting apart pretty evenly. If it's not, you can lightly tap on this case with a soft faced mallet. Just be careful not to damage anything. All right, once you get this to a certain point, you can go ahead and remove this splitting tool. All right, now we can go ahead and remove this case half the rest of the way. Just be careful. We don't want to pull the transmission out with it. So I'm keeping my thumb on that counter shaft. And remember, we still have that O-ring on there. So make sure you get a hold of this. Next, we'll remove the other shift fork that rides on that shaft. And we can remove our shift drum, the other pin and shift fork. And then we can remove our transmission shafts. So on this one, we have the gears come off the end. So we have this gear, a washer, a little needle bearing, and then a washer on the back. And then we can remove the main shaft. After that, we can go ahead and remove our crankshaft. Now to inspect the bearings, these rollers, again, you just need to make sure there's no flat spots or pitting on them and make sure there's no visible damage to this cage. If they rotate freely, then you're probably going to be okay. We're just in here for the transmission and this bike has low hours. If you have a lot of hours on your bike, definitely get all these replaced. Now with the ball bearings, you just need to make sure these rotate freely and then you check axial and radial play on the bearing. So in other words, just make sure you don't have any up and down or side to side play in the bearing. If you're feeling a lot of free play, definitely get them replaced or if they feel rough when you rotate the bearing. So at this point, 
we've inspected everything. The last thing you want to check is make sure there's no cracks in the case. And at this point, all we need to do is get everything cleaned up, get our new parts we're going to install, and then we will be ready for assembly. Before we inspect the transmission, I do want to point out that this is where you will see some differences from bike to bike. The splines are different on some bikes and the 500s will have a sixth gear. So even if you see any minor differences in your transmission, the inspections will be the same. Now with the transmission, you're going to have freewheeling gears, fixed gears, and sliding gears. So on this, this very first one, it's a fixed gear. We're going to look at the teeth first. You just want to make sure none of the teeth are damaged. You know, if they are, you're going to see metal transfer coming up over the top. So they're looking pretty good on ours. Now for the shift drum, you're just inspecting these high points. If the bike was getting kicked out of gear, that pin on the shift fork can wear these down. So this one is looking brand new. So we can move on to the transmission. And we'll check the sliding gears, make sure they slide easily and the freewheeling gears, make sure they rotate. All those are looking good. So the next thing you're going to need to do is inspect these gear dogs. So these are the little tabs on the sides of the gears and you want to make sure the corners of those are nice and sharp on both gears that come together. So sometimes these are going to go into slots and if the slots are worn down or these corners are worn down, you want to replace those gears. The clutch baskets on these bikes are pretty bulletproof, but it doesn't hurt to do a quick inspection for any obvious signs of damage while you're in here. To get everything cleaned up, we're going to use some contact cleaner rags and a gasket scraper. And while you're cleaning, you might notice some parts that have additional damage to them that you didn't notice before. So just pay close attention throughout that cleaning process. Now, if you are reusing your bearings like us, it's a good idea to cover them up when you're scraping the gasket on the case half. That way you don't get any debris down in there. One final thing I want to point out is we're actually reusing these sills. Normally you wouldn't do something like that, but this is a brand new motor and we're just going to treat them like they're brand new. We want to avoid spraying them off with contact cleaner. Now, one thing, if you do need to replace these, all you're going to do is use a seal puller, pop these out, and then if you need to remove the old bearings, you can heat the case half up, use a, use a bearing driver and hit those out. And then you're gonna heat the case back up. You can even freeze the new bearings and again, use a bearing driver to drive those in. And that's it for the KTM Husqvarna and GasGas Gas 450, 500, and 501 bottom end disassembly. If you need any parts for your rebuild, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there. For us, we're going into the transmission. Now the 500s and 501s are already going to have a sixth gear, but we're adding a sixth gear to our 450. So if you want to know how to do that to your 450, follow us over to that video and make sure you subscribe to our channel because that's where you're going to find the latest content that's coming out. So check all that stuff out. Thanks for watching.